Hello, welcome to axial loading, statically determinant problems. In this video, I'm going to be working through a statically determinant problem where the shaft has a hollow section. And here we have the, well, the shaft we're going to be working with. Now, starting from the left end, you can see we have a hollow segment with an outer diameter 4 inches and an inner diameter 2 inches. And then here on the segment right we have a solid section and both of these are made out of steel. So Young's modulus of 30,000 KSI. This second segment has a diameter of 2.5 inches. Now remember, one of the first things you're going to want to do is, if you're given the area, solve for the diameters. Given the diameters, solve for the areas. And with a hollow section, the area that we're concerned with is the area that, it, that consists of the material. So that hollow section in there, just the empty area, is not what we want, we just want the material part. And if you go back to the earlier video where I went through the basic concepts, you can see here for hollow shafts, we solve for that area. And it basically just comes down to the outer diameter minus the inner diameter within the area, the standard area equation. And if you do that, you solve for the area of segment 1 to be 9.425 square inches, and the area of segment 2 to be 4.909 inches squared. Okay, so on the loads, on the far right end, we have a 50 kip load putting the shaft in tension. And at the end of the hollow segment, the same point where the solid section begins, we have 20 kip, two 20 kip loads. Just like in the other problem, in the basic problem, you can simplify these two 20 kip loads into a single 40 kip, 40 kip load on the central axis, putting it in line with the 50 kip. Okay, so we can start bringing up the program here. Here's this little box that reminds you how to set up your segments. Now we have starting the right end we have this uniform solid section and then boom you hit new loads, new diameter and new composition, well, it becomes hollow. So that breaks it into starting a new segment, which is uniform until the end. So we just have two segments. Okay, so working from the left to the right, segment one has a length of 30 inches. Remember, we want to hit hollow because it's hollow. So now we can put in our outer diameter, which is four inches, inner diameter, two inches, outer shear modulus 30,000 KSI inner shear modulus nothing because it's hollow there's no material there so you can just leave it blank the area of segment 1 well we solved for it 9.425 and on a segment 2 now this one's solid its length is only 16 inches diameter 2.5 shear modulus is the same and because it's solid we can ignore these two inner things we also solve for its area so now I can put in loads we have this right load and here we have 40 kip load so that just leaves two Working from the left to the right, 
the end of segment one, so 30 inches, we have negative 40 kip. Negative because compression. Segment two is 16 inches, so 30 plus 16, 46, and it is 50. Left clamp only. This here reminds you of the difference between segments and sections, where sections take into consideration force. Two segments, two sections. That's because these all, all of these changes line up all at the same time. So we can draw this, and you can see really the placement of the loads. Okay, so time to solve this. Starting from the right, we can look at section two first. So section two analysis. Very simple. Summation of forces comes down to the reaction doing 50 kip. Then P over A, where A is that area for section two, gives you your stress and PL over AE using segment two's reaction and its length and so on. So we can put in that information. So 50 kip, outer stress, Let's see what was that, 3, 7. Now these all have more than four significant digits. So to your point, five, four, three, two. It appears something has gone wrong for this segment's elongation. So let's double check it. Okay, I see what I did wrong. It's 5.432 to segment negative 3, and I put in an extra 0 there. So it should just be 2 zeros. Okay, there we go. So it accepted all those. We can move on to segment 1 section one. So for the summation of forces, now this 40 kip comes into play. Solving for our new P1, our reaction rather. And once you have P1, you know the area of the segment, you can solve for stress, and you can solve for elongation. The These equations, they don't really change at all from it being hollow, it's just you incorporate that hollow area into play. That's only the real change here. So we can start entering this information. Stress. Now, these summation of forces, they're all pretty similar, so it only comes down to a difference of 10,000. So that, that actually gives you a fairly small stress amount. Okay. So you can see here, we have all of our stuff filled in. It gives you the net elongation, which is just the summation of the two elongation for the segments. As you can see, I also have written down here. 
and that's basically it that's that's all there is to the problem so just as the main idea goes when you're working with a hollow section calculation wise all you need to do is just take into consideration the new area that you have to solve for it being hollow and then using that area it just fits into the normal equations okay that's it